Hello, I'm looking for... Out! Who's out? No, I'm looking for the tax collector. Oh, don't tell me they're out. I thought they only came out with a full moon. A full moon? Yeah, you know, vampires, bloodsuckers. <laughs> I am the income tax collector. Oh, I'm blood group B. Wanna buy? <laughs> out! And wait until I call you in. Well, how far out do you want me to go? I can go right back out into the street if you want. Just outside the office will do. Yeah, it's her, the it's her. Come in. Come in. Come in. I said, come in. I couldn't hear you, the door was shut. <laughs> I suppose you've come about your arrears. No, I've come about this threatening letter. I've got a doctor about me ears. <laughs> I said arrears. Look, my name is Jim London, and I want to know why I've got this summons. Simple. You got it because your name is on it. It's a funny old system, but it seems to work. <laughs> Anything else I can do for you? Yes, you could try walking backwards across a motorway. Uh, <laughs> can you tell me why I've been sent this summons? It's again very simple. You owe us money for tax. You have not paid it. So we have summoned you to appear in court next Tuesday. But we will ask the judge to institute an order distraining your goods and chattels. Oh. <laughs> and if they do not realise sufficient funds, we will apply for an order to declare you bankrupt. Whereupon we will take your house. Good day. Have you ever thought of doing a course about how to win friends and influence people? <laughs> In this business we already influence people and we don't need to win friends, just court cases. <laughs> anyway, what is the purpose of this drollery? Look, mate, the purpose of this is, is to stop you appearing in court next week and appearing a bigger plonker than you obviously are. <laughs> According to this summons, right, I was supposed to have been paid three and a half grand by Wally Harris for driving taxis for him. Right! Wrong. I'll never work for him. You were found in possession of one of Mr. Harris's taxes. Ah, I was doing him a favour, wasn't I? He asked me one afternoon to run him over to Wapping. If I'd have known then what I know now, I'd have just run him over. <laughs> anyway, we had a slight accident. Yes, involving a Rolls Royce and a... a lorry load of horse manure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. None of which was my fault, I might add. I mean, I was sort of parked up at the traffic lights, indicating left, when suddenly this lorry load of manure comes reversing towards me, see? I thought, Jimbo, if you're not lucky, mate, you're going to end up right in the... Yeah, yeah, well, I have the details. <laughs> Here. Yeah, well, that was the last time I ever drove one of these taxis, and as a result, I'm still being sued by everybody, aren't I? Including a geezer who wants a new carburetor for his roller. A new carburetor? Yeah. Have you ever heard the saying, you know, when it hits the fan? Yes. <laughs> Well, it did, straight through the radiator grill. That's irrelevant. No, no, it was an horse's. If it was an elephant's, we'd still be looking at a roller. I said irrelevant. Oh, anyway. Mr. London, we have a sworn statement from Mr. Harris's accountant that he paid you this money. That was how he was able to claim tax relief on it. He never did. It's a porky pie. This conversation is a complete waste of time. Yeah. We have audited Mr. Harris's books ourselves. They are in immaculate order. Well, now come then, at the moment, <laughs> he's doing three years in Parkhurst. I mean, he ain't on the Isle of Wight for his health, is he? That is a different matter entirely. Apparently, some of his vehicles lack documentation. I'm not surprised. Half of them were nicked. I should have tumbled it when I see one was a hearse with a taxi meter screwed on it. <laughs> then you admit to driving stolen cars. Look, look, is it fair to take the word of a geezer currently knocking holes in the needles against mine? Yes. That's a big strong why? Because his books are in order. Your tax accounts, on the other hand, seem to consist of penciled numbers on the back of a cigarette packet. I don't earn enough to fill the back of a cigarette packet, Pinhead. <laughs> I <laughs> beg your pardon. <laughs> oh, so I said, Pinhead, what I earn would sort of fit on the head of a pin. <laughs> Look, I am a very busy man. I, I didn't get no money out of this at all. All I got was two ear holes full of horse, horse dung, right? Right? I thought I'd gone deaf for a week. I should have seen the doctor's face and I went to have my ears syringed, but that's another story. I had the RSPCA following me about for a fortnight. Mr. London, this is immaterial. Yeah, and in me material, I was smothered in it. I'll tell you what, if I'd have been working, I'd have claimed against that, wouldn't I? Me best Hong Kong tweed covered in... I said immaterial. All right, I'm sorry. It's because my ears are bunged up with that stuff you put on your rhubarb. But I don't mean custard. Yes, yes, you have told me. 
Anyway, we are satisfied that you earned this money. You have not paid the tax on it. We are taking you to court. But you... And I do hear that the DHSS are waiting for the outcome of this case with some interest. Why? Because once we get judgment against you, they will charge you with fraud. Claiming benefit whilst earning... Ooh. <laughs> a maximum sentence of five years. Right? <laughs> I'm sure you'll love the Isle of Wight. Knocking holes in the needles, as you so aptly put it. Do you know your way out? Would you say so? I'd have said fashionable, but not quite way out. <laughs> Go! <laughs> so that's me then, nicked in it, bound for pokey, lose me house, bankrupt everything. All because of a lorry load of horse manure. My dad always told me it was lucky if you stood in it. Didn't tell me what was going to happen if a lorry load of it fell on me. Oh, Jim. You know what you need to raise your spirits, eh? Yeah, thanks, Wanda, but even Bo Derek couldn't raise my spirits at the moment. <laughs> or anything else. Oh, a character witness. A what? Someone who'll get up in court and say you was honest and truthful. After all, it's only Wally Harris's word against yours. Who's going to stand up for me in court? Who's going to believe any of my character witnesses? All the people who know me have got handcuffs on. Be like the annual chain gang out in. What about the vicar? He'd be good in court. He should be. He's had enough practice. No, not the Reverend Pratt. Yeah. He seems such a nice old man. Well, he's all right. He's just a bit too fond of the hard stuff, isn't he? You can always tell when he's holding communion, a whip bread tanker pulls up outside his church. <laughs> It is. I always thought he had a limp. <laughs> what about Arnold Moggs? Oh, old rat features. What about him? Well, it's a councillor, respectable. No, nah, he wouldn't speak up for me. He hates me. He does. He's trying to get rid of me. No, he isn't. Yes, he is. He keeps telling me about these job opportunities in the Falklands. <laughs> what if I was to ask him? No, nah, it still wouldn't work. Mm, I think I could change his mind. What are you going to do? Give him a brain transplant? <laughs> My little feminine way. If they're little, my name's Jack Horner. <laughs> Leave him to me. I'll have him standing up in court in no time. You will end up all goodness and light. <laughs> Mrs. Pickles. Who calls? It's me, Mr. Moggs. Come in, it's open. Hello. You seem to have a problem with your light bulbs. There's no problem with my electricity, Mr. Mox. No problem at all. The switch is by the door, would you mind? Oh. <sighs> oh. Mrs. Pickles. I was just having a little beauty sleep. Uh, yes. Well, it, it seems to work very well, if I may say so. How very gallant you are, Mr. Muggs. Uh, you said you wanted a little favour. Oh, yes. Uh, but first, I want... Would you open that bottle of wine for me? <laughs> I have tried, but you know... There are times when a woman really does need a man. <laughs> My word. That was a bit of a struggle and no mistake. Yes. But you didn't give up, did you? I like a man who never gives up. Thank you. Sit down and have a little tincture with me. Uh, I, I don't think Mrs. Moggs would like it. Then we won't give her any. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Or perhaps uh, just a small one then. Mm. After all, uh, while the cat's away, the mice. Ah! Will... Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry, but when anyone mentions mice, I go all to pieces and I come out in little goose pimples. Would you like to feel? <laughs> uh, how is uh, Mr. Pickles, your husband, then? Um, he hasn't escaped recently or anything, then? He's 
still banged up, thank you. <laughs> oh, goodness me, is that the time? I must be off. Um, Mrs. Morgs will be waiting for me. She'll be coming home from bingo soon. She goes every Wednesday. It's her only night out. <laughs> is that a fact? <laughs> Tell me, you, what do you do with yourself when she's doing the two little ducks? <laughs> Number one and all that. I, I... <laughs> well, I, uh, I generally indulge myself. I'm a bit of a philatelist. Oh, no, Lord. <laughs> now you have surprised me. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> uh, there's no harm in it as long as nobody gets hurt. I... Oh, no, you, uh, you can't get hurt collecting stamps. Well, my stand did. They trapped his hand in the till at the post office. <laughs> Tell me about your collection. I'm sure you must have quite a few items that would interest me. Oh, um, <laughs> yes, well, actually, I do have a full set of purple Albanians. <laughs> I've never met anyone with a full set of purple Albanians. Have you, um, have you ever seen a French colonial with perforations on one side? <laughs> Not all down one side. I would have remembered him. It's not something you're likely to forget. I, um, I, I could show you a, a pink triangular Mauritius. Unfranked. Oh, mate, my day. Oh, Lord. Why don't uh, you show me your collection next Wednesday? Bingo night. Now, about that little favour I wanted to ask you. I'll do it. <laughs> My friend Jim has got to go to court next Tuesday. It's just a very trifling matter, but um, he wants a character witness. I can't do it. Uh, well, if the poor boy goes to jail, I might be too upset to have a look at your collection. I'll do it. Oh. <laughs> well, I must be off. Uh, until Wednesday, then. <laughs> Wednesday? Yeah. Yes? Wanda? Could I have me long stemmed cut slice Georgian goblet back? Oh. Uh, TTFM. Okay. Uh. He said yes! <laughs> <laughs> you my feminine bras will get you what you wanted. Is there something else something to for you? Yeah. Can you sling a bucket of cold water over me so I can get out of this bloody basket? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. You ain't waking the dead. <laughs> Your door knocker. Come in for me hand. You remind me of my mate Banjo. Everything he touches comes off in his hand. Doctors wait outside the loo for him, just in case. <laughs> Dry rocks and woodworm. Hey, Your door knocker. This place is falling apart. Get out of it. Sound as a bell, this place. <laughs> well, there's been a bit of subsidence recently, hasn't there? What about old Fred the other night down at number three? Went down his coal cellar and came up the Elephant and Castle tube station. <laughs> no. Yeah, straight up, yeah. He was up at the London Transport this morning trying to get his coal back. <laughs> You're having me on. Would I do that? Would I try and pull the wool over the eyes of the greatest brain that's ever propped up the bar of the Freemason's arm? <laughs> well, I don't know, you can be so cheerful with what you've got hanging over you. Oh, don't tell me the ceiling's coming down and all. No, it's this court case day after tomorrow. The case, the whole case is down to my character, right? Now, I've got a character witness, namely one Arnold Moggs, Councillor of the Realm. I shall be in and out of there in five minutes with no stain on my character. Yeah, well, you'll have a stain somewhere when Moggsy starts talking in court. Eh? What do you mean? Well, from what I hear, he's going to sell you out. Well, it's his chance to get rid of you, isn't it? He's going to tell the court you're untrustworthy. Hey? Yeah. I hear he's got half his relatives lined up to look over your house once you go. <laughs> wouldn't surprise me to find he's printed a brochure. Moxie wouldn't do that. He wouldn't. He would, wouldn't he? He would do that, Moxie would. I'll kill him, I'll yeah. kill him. Well, that won't look too good, will it? If you kill him... Well, I'll just go there and kick him, then. Well, that'll be just as bad if he walks into court with your shoe free lace holes up his kyber. Well, I'll stick his end down his throat, and it looked like suicide. <laughs> Take it easy, son. It could all be a rumour. Yeah, but there again, 
knowing what a Nuremberg the bloke is. I don't believe it. Oh, here. Yeah. Here, yeah, talking of rumours. Yeah? What you done to upset that Johnny Razors? Me? Nothing. Well, he's looking for you. Well, at least his blokes are. What is it with you making up these stories? You've been at the paint stripper again. Well, it's a bloke your size, your description, called Jim. Yes, and every Tom, Dick and Harry round here is called Jim. To give you some imagination your generation had when it comes to christening. I'd say the only bloke who ain't called Jim's called Blast It, because the vicar stubbed his toe on the font. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this Jim stopped a mugging last week outside the tax office. Eh? Yeah, apparently this mugger's been walking around like Groucho Marx since it happened. Johnny Razors isn't happy. Yeah, but Johnny Razors ain't into mugging. Yeah, well, it's the recession, isn't it, son? I mean, when times are old, industry has to look in different directions. It's probably a trainee mugger he's taken on under one of these government <laughs> training schemes. <laughs> he was mugging a little old lady. And with difficulty, I admit. Yeah, well, he was just starting, wasn't it? First part of these training schemes is to start them off on something easy. What are you going on about? Well, don't get me wrong, son. I mean, I admire your spirit. Have a go, that's what I say. Oh, I can't believe this. Five minutes ago, I was happy as a pig in clover, and now, well, I feel like deaf. Oh, yeah, well, that's that horse's manure. No, not deaf, deaf, deaf as in dead, deaf. Ah. And it's all your fault. You're a right jinx, you are. You're a right Jonah, aren't you? Eh? I mean, you walk in my front room with my knocker in your hand, eh? You tell me that Moggsy wants to speak to me, get me done in court on Tuesday, and then you tell me that Johnny Razors and his mob want to discuss grievous bodily harm with me. Yeah, well, don't mention it, son. If I can spread a little sunshine as I stroll along life's highway. Oh, if I see you strolling along life's highway, I shall push you off the curb. Yeah. Don't take it so hard, son. It'll all come out in the wash. Yeah. I'll be the next thing coming out in the wash, won't I? If Johnny Razors finds me, I'll be propping up the Thames barrier. Yeah, well, uh, I'd better be going. Oh, look, here, if you're up the Freemasons later, I'll buy your pints. But uh, bring some money with you, cos I'm a bit short. <laughs> bring some money with me? Oh, here, and another thing. What, you don't want me to drink it for you, and all, do you? No, 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 it's just Johnny Razors' business. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, look, if you can give Brian the money to give to me, see? And there's no need for you to stand right next to me in the pub, see? Oh, would you like me to wear a brown paper bag over me head? <laughs> That's my gym, eh? I'm glad you can look on the bright side, son. The bright side, the bright side. Mogsy, I'm gonna kill you! Uh, did you want to see me about something? Ten out of ten, mate. See the old brains working overtime tonight? Now listen here, you. A little bird tells me that you're going to do the dirty on me on Tuesday in court. That's an untruth. I'm merely going to tell the court the truth about yourself, as it is my duty so to do, as I promised Wanda... <laughs> Mrs Pickles, I would. But you can't tell the truth, Mogsy, mate. You're on our side. I promised to tell the truth about your character, not perjure myself. Would you? If you want me to say nice things about you, you should have said nice things about me. I do say nice things about you if you only open your ear holes, you pranny. See? <laughs> You're horrible to me. You take the mickey out of me. You tell people I'm an idiot. That's because I tell the truth. You are an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll get hurt. You'll get hurt if you drop me in it on Tuesday. Physical Mozzie. violence! Oh, Help! 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 Be quiet. Help! Arnie, please. Arnie, look. I'll lose everything in court if you don't stand up for me on Tuesday. Yes, well, I... I have to do what's right for society. Yeah. But before you bump yourself off... <laughs> See? A little joke. A little joke. Look, Arnie. Counselor. Let's just try and be reasonable. We're grown-up people. Let's be reasonable about this. you got to say nice things about me on the Tuesday, right? Please, please. Or, or failing that, just don't turn up, right? Well, I can't just not turn up. I've been subpoenaed. I've got to appear. Not if you're dead, you don't. You can't Whoa. intimidate me! <laughs> well, can't you have Mogsy kidnapped? Who'd kidnap him? Five minutes in his company, the kidnappers would give theirself up. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Hello, Chip. Can I get you a drink? No, I'll get you one before the old man gets it. He's already here. Eh? He said his leg was playing him up again. He didn't think he could make it to the bar. So could you take his drink over? His leg playing him up. Good, you crafty old git. <laughs> <laughs> we might get him a bucket of water that way. If he don't drink it, he can soak his foot in it. <laughs> on a slate, right? In view of the trouble you're in, on the ass. Oh, so I will take that one then. Oh, cheers, sir. Bad leg. 
Yes, another couple of these and I might be able to walk again. Any more news from Moggs? No, oh, Moggs, he now. He's gone into hiding. He only comes out at night. Ooh. Mind if I join you, fellows? Why has the sun gone down? <laughs> Actually, I may be able to help you in your court case tomorrow. <coughs> well, you mean you've had a change of heart? You're going to say nice things about me? I might. Really? I might. If you sign an agreement saying you'll sell me your house, I'll have the papers all drawn up. You rotten pimple. You crook. You're going to get me another pint. <laughs> Mogsy, I've met some people in my time, but you are the lowest, the dirtiest, the rottenest, underhanded person I've ever met. You make, you make Imla look like Noddy. It's still the best offer you'll get. Honestly, makes you wonder what more can go wrong. <sighs> Jim London. Him. <laughs> Mr. Ray's has asked me to give you this. Shut up! <laughs> With Mr. Ray's compliments. Aye, it ain't a letter bomb, is it? I oh, say, fellow, it's a bomb. No, oh, don't be so silly. Oh, it's a letter. <clears throat> Dear Mr. London, last week you saved my own mum from being mugged. <laughs> and I hear you're having a spot of bother yourself. Some of my family are at the moment sharing accommodation with Walter Harris. So I asked them to have a gentle word with him. Know what I mean? Ha ha. <laughs> the enclosed should sort your problem out. Oh. To whom it may concern. <laughs> yeah. This is to state I never paid Jim London any money for anything ever signed Walter Harris oh. Partners. <laughs> Here, look at this, P.S. Look, please excuse the shaky handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 Jim, you're free. Uh, it's funny that you can't think of someone like Johnny Razor's having a mother. Oh, well, you would have done if you'd seen this old girl. <laughs> well, I think it's fantastic. Oh. Well done, Jim. Oh, mm. What a relief, hey, Councillor Moggs. <laughs> 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 oh, come on, Arnie, forget it, eh? All's well to end well. It's water under the bridge now. Come on, sit down. Come on, mate. Let's all have a drink, eh? On Mogsy, eh? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Thank <laughs> you.